Hey guys, it's Hunter Parrish from Godspell here at Broadway.com answering some of your questions. I don't know. I think Jesus probably, what he would say to Silas, wouldn't be as like berating as you'd expect. He's probably just going to say, you know, do your best, be a good kid. Maybe stop selling drugs would probably be something you'd say. <laughs> um, but I don't know, I think they'd be friends. At least my version of the two would be friends. <laughs> well, as Jesus in God's spell, I must say my Bible, because that's important. And uh, I think I mentioned this on our website on God's spell, but I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I like have an IV connected to Red Bull because that's kind of the way this this life works, right? Um, I don't wake up and drink coffee. Red Bull is my uh, my drug of choice. And uh, what else? These days, I I uh, I play a lot of Wii. So I'm pretty, you know, if I could leave home with the Wii, I would. <laughs> I think probably other than doing the show and seeing other shows brought on Broadway and off Broadway, um, it's probably, uh, you know, the great thing about New York City is it's this collection of different cultures and food and restaurants and I like food and I like to eat so um, trying a new restaurant in different um, areas of the city is really exciting to me. I try and do it like every night and, um, you know, finding little subcultures that, that live in New York City I found that fun so that's probably how I spend most of my time when I'm not on stage. I don't know, my, my next stint might not be a musical. So in that case, you know, Philip Seymour Hoffman has Death of a Salesman on and um, Alan Rickman in the seminar. I mean, these are guys that I look up to as actors, so I appreciate the work they do. And uh, to get to work alongside them in a straight play would be great. Or if we got them to do a musical, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Embarrassingly enough, I probably sing more Disney songs than anything. <laughs> and uh, I know that's probably bad to say um, since Disney has half the shows on Broadway of my competition. But uh, one or two Lion King songs have definitely graced the walls of my shower. And, um, and yes, you know, I'll admit, you know, a little Little Mermaid doesn't hurt anybody. And uh, we had a short stint here on Broadway, but it lives out long moments in my shower. <laughs> Can you feel the love tonight? Oh yeah. You know, it's funny, when I first talked to our director, he told me I was going to come out on stage in my underwear. So I kind of thought I was signing up for a very similar thing uh, to Weeds and Spring Awakening and such. Turns out I'm only in boxers and, and a, a wife beater. So um, it's not as crazy um, as you may, I would have expected. But yes, I'm clothed. It is a, uh, it's actually a breath of fresh air for me. But still, I show some skin, and sometimes when I come out on stage as Jesus, believe it or not, I get a few like, you know, whoos, you know, or you know, people like whistle and stuff, and I'm like, okay, it's one thing if I'm, you know, being Spring Awakening, it's another if like, you're talking about some religious figure here, but uh, you know, I'll take it, it's, uh, it's fine, I'm, I do appreciate keeping my clothes on since I haven't been in the gym in six months. Um, do not look forward to going back to weeds, which I will probably have to be naked again. But, uh, you know, such is life. <laughs> probably the biggest would be, um, we were on stage and this guy had run on drunk and uh, got really obnoxious during one of our numbers. Touch me, you know that one and he got a little too into the song. It uh, had to be escorted off stage and he shouted many explicit uh, words and uh, 
you know, it kind of stopped all of our, all of our show and all of Broadway that night, actually. It was like the talk of the town. And, um, and yeah, and then we, you know, everybody went off stage and then we resumed the play and it was like nothing happened, but you could tell people in the audience were like, what the heck, is this part of the show? You know? And uh, yeah, that's by far my craziest Spring Awakening or theatrical experience to date. <laughs> He's actually a great guy, we've known each other for years, um, and finally got to do a project together, and I beat him up twice, so, you know, I won that, uh, that was exciting, and, uh, and Zach makes millions of dollars, so he won in that uh, respect. <laughs> um, and yeah, we, we see each other from time to time, he, he doesn't get out much because he's always working in some other country, but... Um, yeah, he's a great guy. We had a lot of fun in that show. Um, it was an important movie and film for both of us because it was an opportunity for him to break away from the high school musical stuff and for me to um, jump into a role that was really difficult for me and um, took a lot of work. So it was fun kind of really diving into uh, the deeper skills that we both have. I love the show so much, um, and I'm sure for the Spring Awakening fans, like that would be hard to answer, just because it's so um, layered, and each moment you kind of cherish for what it is. Um, I really grew doing the show. I grew to look forward to doing Left Behind because that was a great moment for my character, and for I love that song. Um, Bitch of Living is always a great moment for everybody, but probably my favorite moment of the show is right before I do anything, it's not even something I'm a part of and I'm just sitting in the chair and the girls sing Mama Who Bore Me Reprise and I don't know, you just get this rush of energy and you can feel it in the audience and the music and those um, arrangements for that song were so expertly done and I'm just grateful I got to be a part of that and watch that every night. Yes, the egg sandwich. Um, I actually misquoted myself in that. I called it like my, the, my, the hunter eggy and it's actually not. It's, it's my dad's. I, I, I need to give him full credit. Um, he made that when we were younger. I do like the egg sandwich. But, n but the reason I like the egg sandwich is because it does not take a lot of cooking. <laughs> There's not a lot of work involved. I'm not really a, a good cook. I wish I could be, but I like to eat when I'm hungry. And cooking, you have to start before you're hungry or like be starving throughout cooking and that just doesn't work for me. I need to eat when I'm hungry right away. And Often, my, you know, my microwave sees a lot more of the food that I consume than my stove or oven. Let's put it that way. Wow, I know this one right away. Um, when I was probably oh, 10, maybe, I saw a high school production, the high school later that I would end up, um, that would be my school that I would go to, high school, and, um, they did a production of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. I'm a huge Andrew Lloyd Webber fan, and I, w I, want, I want them to bring back Joseph. I mean, in like two years, after I've had a break from Godspell for a while. Um, and I want to do Joseph and, uh, and Slay It. I've, uh, I've been talking about that for years, and so hopefully one day they'll bring it back and ask me to do it. <laughs> my case for Godspell would be to love yourself and that's the biggest thing that I learned and has helped me to actually perform every single night with confidence in the, that I'm not up here trying to do anything but just be um, all of the great things about me and um, share those with people and um, try and put as much love out to people um, on stage and off that I can. Hey guys, thanks so much. That was awesome. Some really great questions. And uh, I've enjoyed answering them for you. Come see Godspell, Circle in the Square. And uh, I'll be there and say hi. <laughs>